Hello everyone. Looks like we are live. It also looks like my easel is not quite set up right. I have decided I'm going to have to make a checklist before I start live streaming um, for the, the stream itself and then after because every time I think I'm, I've got everything, it's always like something major that I forgot. There were some major things I forgot today. Hence me being three minutes late. Sorry about that. Okay, so today we are going to be painting a seashell in acrylics. The link for in the see, I already can't talk. The link for the reference photo is in the video description. You can download that and paint along with me. I'm going to be working on a Fredericks watercolor canvas board. These guys are it's your usual canvas board. Unlike your usual canvas board, two things. One, it's super super smooth. Two, it's not going to warp like many of the generic terrible, terrible things you find at local art supply stores. So this one is one of my favorites to paint on for acrylics. And I know you're thinking, well, it's watercolor. Why are you doing that with acrylics? Actually, some of you aren't thinking this because you've heard me say this before. I love these for acrylics because they're so, so smooth. So it's really easy to get fine detail. It's really easy to get smooth blending. If you have been working in acrylics and you're having a really hard time where the finished results is kind of bumpy and rough looking, your canvas may be too rough. Try a smoother surface will make a huge difference. Okay, and I think we are good. Is there any other message? Oh, you can bid on this. If I did my job right, the auction is available over at my website. Link is in the video description if you want to bid on the finished painting. For, let's see, I still need to send dolphin soles and the pink clouds from last week will be going out tomorrow or probably Friday. It's been crazy getting ready for Aquashella. Oh, I guess that's another announcement. Aquashella is this Saturday and I found out I'm going to be doing a live painting demonstration on stage at noon. Aquashella. So if you're in the Dallas area and you want to come watch that, it'll, I've only got 45 minutes to get it done. And because it's on stage, it's kind of better if it's a little bit larger. I don't even know what I'm going to do. Let me know what you, what ideas you have for me to paint for that. Something that you think I can get done large. I can have the background already done, but the subject matter obviously needs to be fish related. So yeah, that's going to be a challenge, um, but fun. And what else? There was one other thing. So we had Aquashella. We have the auction, you can bid on that. Oh, this canvas, by the way, was provided me, no, let's try that in English. This canvas was provided to me by Fredericks. So thank you to Fredericks for this canvas to use during the live stream. And let's see, paintings being sent out. What else was there? I think there was something else and I don't remember what it was yet. I can't remember. Um, an angelfish. I actually, so an angelfish in saltwater is not like an angelfish in, in freshwater. So it's a little a different fish, but I'm actually considering, I was thinking about a Moorish idol or a copper banded butterfly, which kind of look like the freshwater angelfish. So that may be a possibility. Oh, that's the other thing. Let me know throughout this live stream. If you have ideas of what you want to see next week, a any suggestions, this shell was something that someone else had suggested. So I definitely am listening to your ideas. If it's something I think I can get done in a a, about an hour. I would love to hear what medium you want to see for these live streams and what subject matter. And okay, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do on this guy is paint the background. So let's move the label out of the way. And I'm going to be, I may have to adjust the lighting on this as we get going. We'll have to see. We know we always do. I am going to be using my fine mist sprayer and a mop brush to get that really smooth out of focus. Ooh. I did not clean this mop brush very well last time, but um, to get that smooth out of focus background and let's go ahead and put some color on the palette. I think I will go with cobalt blue and I'm going to mix some aqua with that. And then I'm definitely going to need some raw sienna and white for the sand. The sand is mostly gray, so it's mostly going to be black and white, but we'll get a little bit of raw sienna in there. And I need a paintbrush. I'm going to go with this number 12 Filbert. A larger brush may be easier, but in my case, because I'm at the easel and it's not easy for me to go to the sink to wash a larger brush, I'm just going to go with this one. And I'm going to be mixing white in, oh, I should probably get white out then. I'm going to be mixing white with everything. If you have any questions, leave them now. I'll be answering them at the end of the stream. I'm also going to be sharing all of the ways that I make money as an artist. So hopefully that helps some of you who are looking to be, to make a living as an artist. 
Okay, I'm gonna mix some of the blue. I'm always hesitant to show the palette because we know I always forget to switch the camera back. A really pretty blue, and I'm gonna throw in some white. I'm just gonna make a mess of color here. Okay, hey look, I changed the cameras. So we're going to go ahead and throw the, oh, that is a pretty color. I wonder if I remember to paint this the right side up. I always hate, it doesn't really matter, but I half the time paint the, so it's upside down with the background or the, the backing with it says Fredericks. I don't know why that bothers me, but it does. But it's right side up tonight. So I'm just gonna do this in a sort of diagonal. Now if this starts to dry, all I'm gonna do is take my fine mist sprayer and go over that. You don't wanna overdo it, just light mist. Links for the supplies I'm using are in the video description. Now let's add some white. As I work my way out here, I'm just gonna put thick white so I'm not mixing a lot of water or anything else. Because the canvas is already wet, I don't need to mix as much water in with my paint over on the palette. So I can just take a chunk of paint, go right over that. I'm gonna mist that again, just to make sure that doesn't start to dry. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling in the raw sienna, black and white. Anytime you see a grayish color, you know that's just black and white. And then whatever color you want on top of that. That gray, by the way, that I'm mixing here is way too, like, whoa, that is too dark. So what I'm gonna do is wipe that gray off. I've just got a wet paper towel over here. I think just wipe that off. Let's take a chunk of white to mix out from the side. Now the reason that I didn't just take a chunk of paint and mix straight into that pile, it would have taken too much paint. It would have taken a very long time to get this light, light enough. So by just coming from the side, and I can just slowly pull the color I want in until I get it where I want, that is a much safer way to go. And now I'm gonna paint this in here. And I'm still a bit, I'm gonna pull a little bit more raw sienna, a bit more white into that. One of the things that I do at the bottom are on my easel, you can't really see it right now, but I have contact paper that lines my easel. So like right now I'm getting a ton of paint. Let me see if I can lower this. You can see I'm getting a ton of paint down here. I, this contact paper over the years, that will build up. It'll get really thick, but all I have to do is change the paper. So it's no big deal. Very, very easy. When I used to paint just straight onto the wood canvas, what I would have to do is take a razor blade and scrape that off. I mean, you can do it. It's not the end of the world, but this contact paper or shelving paper, it's fairly inexpensive and just every few years I swap it out. Makes things much easier. Now this is too dark, so what I'm gonna do, I wanna keep this wet still, so let's miss that again. I'm gonna wipe the paint off my brush and just go on right over that. I want this to transition really soft between the blue and the sand. I do not need this perfectly smooth. I'll smooth this out with a mop brush. Let's grab a bit more white paint. And that's pretty good. Actually, I think I do want it a little bit lighter back here. And I don't need it to be exact to the reference photo. I'm just using this as a loose guideline. So what I'm gonna do, this may create more strokes because like I said, I didn't clean this very good last time. I need to use brush cleaner and soak it, but let's see how it is for my first layer and then I've got a nice soft one that will smooth out any streaks the somewhat damaged brush might cause. I'm just doing little half circles and I am not touching very hard. If you push very hard with your mop brush, you start creating strokes instead of getting rid of them. If you look at the brush and see how I've got a lot of paint, I'm pushing too hard in all honesty because I'm in a really weird position with where the camera is located. But that will create streaks. You wanna ideally use a very light hand, barely add any pressure there. And look how nice and soft this already looks. So now I'm gonna switch over to the brush that's in a little bit of a healthier condition because I actually did clean this one. And I'm gonna get those final strokes out.
And you can get that look of an oil painting very easy by doing the wet into wet blending like this. So if you've worked with acrylics and you didn't like how rough they looked, they, you can make them look just like an oil painting. Okay, so that is it for the background. Let's move that back so it's all on camera. There we go. So let me, the first thing you wanna do is clean your brushes and then we'll dry the canvas. So when I clean these, let me see if you can actually, eh, you can't really see the water container. Let me mo move this over just a bit. I'm just gonna put the, just the tip of the bristles. Don't get the whole thing wet. I, there should only be paint on the very, very end. So that's the only place that I'm getting wet. I'm not dipping it in so it's all the way fill, getting soaked this way. If I needed to use this again, which I don't for this piece, but I want to be able to dry it very quickly. And if I get the whole thing soaking wet, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. I'm just going to squeeze the excess out and then I rub that in circles on a paper towel that's stuck to a bunch of other stuff. But I just rub that in circles then to dry it out. So let's get this. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other brush. I'm just going to dip the tip. Actually, this one I did get a little bit more wet, so I'm going to have to dip it a little further because I was using really bad technique there. The sound is going in and out. Is it going in and out for everybody? I mean, I wouldn't know how to fix that. I don't have my audio on my notifications, so if somebody did message me about that, I wouldn't have seen it. It's crackly. Okay, hold on. Let me see if... Did that make any difference? Let me know how that is, if it's still crackly. And if it is, I have absolutely no way to fix it besides plugging in and unplugging another one. Somewhat, okay, let me try the other one. If not, I may have to call it because unfortunately there is nothing seems better. Sounds like my mic, that's fine. I mean, obviously it would be the mic. I wanna see really quick. I can unplug the other one and see if it makes better. Okay, it's better for, much better. Okay, I'm gonna unplug the other one just in case. And now I just undid it again because it fell out of my pocket. Hold on. Let me. Check. Okay, it's working. Let's see if it, you guys are getting crackling. I'm gonna wait. Because if that doesn't work, I don't have, I might be able to get the other mic set up. I never installed the other one, so. Okay, oh, actually, I guess I should keep talking so you can tell if it's good or not. I'm just sit, sit here and wait and see if you can guess if it'll work. Okay, it's good now, oh, thank God. Okay, sorry about that. Sounds good, love your studio background, thank you. Um, okay, so let me go ahead, I rinsed all my brushes, let me dry this and then it looks like the boys, I can't say it, I'm not saying it out loud because we know what will happen. Why did I lose power? Hold on. 
I think it got unplugged. I'm just having a good old time with technology and stuff tonight, huh? Although I don't know that you call a hairdryer technology. I don't mind me just climbing under my easel. I'm too old for this. And I found a cobweb while I was at it. And now I know somewhere else that needs to be cleaned on Friday. Okay. That should be dry-ish. I'm just gonna run my hand, finger around the edge because I'm going to have to use tracing and transfer paper in a moment here. Actually, let me go over that one more time. So, do, so does mine, Kay. Should be good, okay. Let's see. Do you boys want a super chat? Well, I guess that's a yes. That They definitely didn't they? So they think now that super chat means treat like during the day, Matt actually will like randomly ask them if they want a super chat. So thank you. Oh, I didn't even say thank you because I was trying to keep it quiet. So the boys didn't. Thank you, Kirsten, so much for the super chat. You earned the boys a treat. You guys want your favorite treat? They love these things. Okay, get back up so they can see your cute faces. Ready? Okay, go boys. Oh, you didn't even bite my hand. Good cow. Okay, go lay down. Lay down. Go lay down. Lay down. Gibson, lay down. Be a problem. I think there's a toy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's the problem. Gibson's not going to do it because Wade left a toy in the bed. Did brother leave his... because Gibson will not lay in the bed with Wade. I thought he was about to do that. So thank you so much for the, the I'm not saying it. Boys, thank you too. Oh, Wade, are you going to snuggle with your new, your new baby? Okay. I don't know why they switch spots every time. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I have pre-drawn out. Studio chair doesn't have wheels. It should. I have a carpet under my my easel so that it catches all the dripping paint, but it also makes it so the rolly chair skips all the time. So what I'm going to do, I've pre-drawn out my shell. I'm going to stick that. I'm going to tape the upper two corners. Now, this is important. Anytime that you're going, oh, wait, I'm ahead of myself. I lied. We haven't even painted the sand yet. What in the world is wrong with me? Um, okay, let's try that one more time. What I'm going to do is take to create the look of sand just along the edge here. I am going to take a brush. This is super stiff. I don't know if you can see like really damaged. I don't clean it well on purpose because these work so much better if they're stiff. You can also use an old toothbrush. Those are excellent, but these I find to be easier and I will use a palette knife to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is with a separate brush, mix in some different colors. Let's start, I'm gonna make a darker color. So let's go with some raw sienna, some black and some white. I really just want darker versions of what, whatever colors I've already used in the sand. That's what I want here. And I've got to thin it with a decent amount, amount of water. For this to work, it's gotta be a lot thinner than you normally would use. So now I can just dip that in there and I'm going to flick the paint right along the edge here. I've got to be careful not to go too crazy because I don't want to go way back here. If I do get it where I don't want, all I'm going to do is take a, a damp paper towel and wipe it off. I just want that along the bottom so we get that little bit of detail. This is the easiest way to make sand. Now, as I move back here, what I'm going to do is take a clean brush, a little bit of water. Actually, I can just use the one I used earlier because it's already wet. And I'm just going to slightly go over that it's gonna wipe some of that down so I don't have too much sand moving back here. Just soften that out. Just a little bit of damp. If it's wet, it erases all of it. I'm not trying to do that. It's smudging it just a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing, but with white. I don't even need to mix any other colors in it. Just white by itself is fine, but I do need to thin it out with a decent amount of water. I don't think you can really see what I'm doing here. There we go. 
So I'm just thinning that with water first and I'm using a separate brush. The reason that I'm not using the brush that I'm going to flick the paint with is that if I do, that brush gets overly saturated with water. I find that these stiff brushes, when they get too much water, they don't flick paint very well. So I want this to stay as dry as possible. So I always mix the color I want with a separate brush. Now, same thing, I'm gonna pull the palette knife towards me to create little white specks. And if I want them thicker, I'm gonna add a little bit of water so I get some thicker globs in there. You want variation, there we go. Now this brush has too much of the dark color, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse that a little bit. So I get some more pure white. It's getting some dark gray mixed in there from the previous layer. There we go. And then anywhere, if I went up too high, I'm just gonna take that brush again, soften that out. Done. Now we have sand that's just in the foreground and you still get that nice blurry background. So easy to do. Now you could, of course, if you wanna go even further with this, you could sit there and paint in just a couple of little pebbles. Little stones would look pretty cool. But I'm not gonna do that right now because that takes a lot of time. Okay, now we are going to dry this, then we can do the shell. Now, a little tip, these have a lot more water in the mixture and they may take a little bit longer to dry. So even though they seem dry, spend a little bit more time on those because you flicked it on a lot heavier than the paint that you painted on, if that makes sense. Okay. Now I can actually do the next step I tried to skip ahead earlier. What I am going to do is take this and I wanna tape it at both upper corners. That is very important. Do not just put tape, one piece of tape in the middle thinking you're gonna save on tape. It's not worth the trouble. Two corners, the reason for that is if you tape it here, this whole thing is gonna be sliding back and forth as you draw it on. Now the transfer paper, that you don't tape down. That you just slide under and this can move around as you go. Let me grab the parts I need for it. So I'm using white transfer paper and I'm just going to slide that under. And your transfer paper, what I usually do if you get the ones that come in these big, huge, huge sheets, I just cut it down into smaller, more manageable pieces and you just move this around as you're working. But don't tape the transfer paper down. And all I need to do is trace over this Make sure that's showing up okay. Not well, I can barely see my lines. Oh, you can see my transfer paper is super, su oh, maybe you can't, it's really used. I may have to find a different piece to make this work. Or a black one would actually, eh, I'd rather not use black, but I could if I have to. My colors are so light. Now I've drawn more details than I really need here. I just need my general shape. Most of this I can freehand in pretty easily. Can you see it? Okay, I'm starting to be able to see it better. I just had to turn the paper some, find a, an area that wasn't as heavily used. I'm also pushing a lot harder than I normally do. I don't love the black transfer paper because I find it to be harder to cover all the way. Sometimes it shows through a little bit. I really don't have that problem usually with the white. Is that good enough? Good enough, I can see what I need. You guys won't be able to see it, but the point there is that I just want really light details. Again, if you've got ideas for next week's live stream, please let me know in the comments.
Just remember, it has to be something I can get done in about an hour. Some of you guys have some really cool, really elaborate ideas that are just, I'm not, I'm fast, I'm not that fast. Okay, so what I'm gonna start with is the inside area of the shell. Let's go ahead, what colors do I wanna do? I think raw sienna, magenta, and white will probably get me that color pretty well. I'm done with the blue, no, I'm not totally done with the blue. Mm, let's move this out of the way. I'm just gonna wipe this because it's wet. Usually I would use a razor blade, but it's still really wet, so I'll just kind of smudge that. Eh. Fine, I'll use the razor blade. Because that did not work out as I planned. There we go. Okay, so I've already got some raw sienna out. I need some deep violet, which I did not prepare for and apparently don't have over here. Let me go and grab that. How did I lose an entire tube? Like five of you know why I call it that. I don't know, that is, well, I might work on this. That's a kind of a bright pink, it's a pretty color, but it is bright. And what I'm going to do is take a filbert. This one will work. I am going to mix some of my quadonka donk, I'm just gonna call it magenta now, with my raw sienna. Let's throw a bit of white in there, and now we're getting this beautiful peach. If I need to, I can add a bit of yellow, I think I do need to, and a lot more white. Let's pull more magenta in. I don't need the color to be exact, I just need it close. And that's a nice peach color. Maybe a little bit of red oxide. Where? Okay, I lost red oxide too. too. How am I losing all of these tubes of paint? Like I've been working with them all week. Here, this is actually almost impressive because my studio is not that big of a mess. Mission. Have to be, a oh, I found the. Almost empty red oxide. Sorry about the delay here. Yes, I absolutely could do a watercolor live stream in the future. Okay, so I've got some red oxide. I'm gonna pull a little bit of that in there too. That gave me my color. There's what I needed. Now you might be thinking, how do you know what color to mix? Experience, paint more. The more you paint, that camera is so out of focus. Hold on. Wow, that's impressively out of focus. I can fix that. That needs to be on my checklist is to fix this camera always goes out of focus. When it's time, I don't know why it does that. Oh, hey, look, you can see what I'm doing now. I'm a professional. Okay, there we go. So what I am going to start with, now when you ask, or you're thinking, how do you know what colors to mix? Experience, the more you paint, the more you blend, use less colors. One of the best ways you will learn what colors to mix, use less colors. So if you buy a set, you've got 50 different colors, don't use all 50, pull out five and work from that. Black and white are usually in most pieces, not all of them, but in most pieces I'll use black and white, and then pick a couple of other, a few other colors. You don't need a million colors. If you're using a million colors, you're not really learning to blend, and usually your paintings come out being a bit chaotic color-wise. They, they're just kind of bizarre, things aren't meshing together well. When you mix from a smaller set of colors, you are much more likely to end up with something that is more harmo harmonious to, or to itself. Like, it, I'm going to use the same, like I use raw sienna in the sand, I wanna use raw sienna in this peach color. 
it's going to make that sand, the, the peach, look better because it's a color I already used somewhere else in the painting. I don't want to just go get a new color I haven't used yet if I can avoid that. Okay, so we've got this inside of the shell. I'm going to start with one solid color and then I'll come back and add the highlights. And I'm just using a larger filbert brush. You can use a smaller brush if that's more comfortable for you. That's another thing, the more you paint, you'll get comfortable using a fairly large brush and getting it to do what a small brush can do. And that's another thing that comes with experience. I remember a teacher once taking his from students, I was watching him paint or teach, and he'd take the brush away from students if he felt it was too small. Don't use that, learn to use the big ones. You'll do that naturally. There's no reason to make it harder for yourself in the beginning, use what's comfortable to you. So I'm gonna wipe that brush off and I'm gonna reload with water and a bit of white. That's too much water. So I'm gonna have to dab this on a paper towel that's under my easel. Got some streaks. So as I lighten this, I may as well make my life easier getting some details with these streaks in this, the shell. And look, it just so easily, I've got detail without like, it's all blended and nice and I didn't even have to put much effort into it. You just wanna do it while it's still wet. When it dries, it makes it a little bit more of a challenge. But because this is so smooth, now here's the thing, don't over blend it. Don't keep reworking the same area or you lose the dark areas. Now there I do need to switch to a smaller brush. This brush is a little frayed so it can't get the tiny area I need. Do I not have a healthy, looks like I do not. Oh, I think I ever used you with, what did I use you with? I'm just a little concerned I used it with OMS or something. Don't have, hopefully you don't have oil on you. I don't think I did. No, it's fine. Okay. A few little streaks in here. I don't wanna go too crazy. Then I can take another brush. Um, do I have a clean brush over here? I don't even know what you're from. You are really damaged though. That is a frayed brush, but it'll work. It's just clean, a little bit damp, and I'm gonna soften out some of those lines. And then we've got a little lighter area going the opposite direction here. And then I'll add some shading once this layer dries. light area here as well to get some more white. And I'm just going to take this other brush and smudge it down. Now, now the nice thing is you can see the edges here kind of frayed, not super clean. Doesn't matter because I haven't painted that part yet. It will matter, just not yet. Now I'm going to use the same brush. I'm going to mix some white in with the color I was previously using for the base of the shell and pull in a little bit more of the raw sienna so it's a little bit more of a golden color. How many times can I say a little bit? Apparently a lot. And we're gonna come right down here. This is a little dark. That's okay, I can come back later with highlights. Now one of the reasons I'm not having to put worry about a base layer, like all of this is showing up really well over the blues, is that I've got so much white mixed in with it. Since they're all light colors, it makes everything a little bit easier. Look, I said a little bit again. I feel I should get a reward for how many times I say it. Now this is gonna need to get way lighter, so I'm gonna wipe the paint off my brush. I don't even need to clean it in water. Now don't over blend. I want some of that previous color. See that golden tone? Leave that in there. I'm not trying to completely cover everything. That's definitely something we have a tendency to do to just keep blending and blending and blending. One brush stroke look good for, so 50 must look amazing. No, like just a couple of brush strokes to blend out. Don't over blend. Okay, now we've got more of this orangey color. Pay attention to those ridges. I'm just gonna go one solid color. We'll do all of our shading and everything right over that. And 
or the color being perfect, no big deal. What you want to watch if you're trying to make your work look more realistic is that you get your values right. Are your lights light enough and your darks dark enough? That matters much more. We have a tendency, and if you find yourself in this, this same position, we have a tendency to think, if I just knew the right color, mine would look more realistic. It's not the color. It's rarely the color. There are exceptions. There are times like using yellow in a portrait oftentimes it makes things look sickly, but more often than not, the problem isn't the color that you're using, it's your values. Are your lights light enough, darks dark enough? So if you can get yourself to stop focusing so much on color and start focusing on what really matters, the values, then your work is gonna look a million times better. I've seen where people want to spend so much time before they even start painting, fussing over color theory and learning color theory. It's not the thing that matters so much. I'm not saying there's not a place for it, but it's not everything. And that's the, the problem that a lot of people, when they're beginning, they think that the color is just, it's everything. You definitely want to get that out of your head. You will progress so much faster. So I've used more of that peach color. As I say, don't worry about color. I'm telling you, I'm changing colors. But using that peach color, let's pull that down here. And now that lighter color with the white, we've got some streaks in here. This brush is probably going to be too thick for what I'm about to do. I don't know how it works. I'm holding it to the side. I'm gonna start getting these little streaks on the shell. And they start curving up. So don't, that's the other thing. You have, people have a tendency, they'll do one line and like, okay, that curve is perfect. It looks so good. I'm gonna do that over and over and over again. It won't look right. Look at the reference photo, how these start curving this direction. They curve up. These are the things you wanna watch in that photo. Okay, that gives me a really good base to work with. I'm gonna dry this and we're gonna start shading everything. Now notice right now, it looks like a weird cartoon. That's where the shading comes in. So not just detail, we've gotta add detail, but the shading is what's really gonna make a big difference. How do I keep my paintbrush wet while painting? I keep adding more paint and more water. Reload it as needed. I know that seems overly simplified, but that's really it. Like I don't even think about it, it just, I reload it. Okay, let's see, dry it. grab, I could probably use the same brush, or just the round one I've been using on this week's Patreon lesson, which should be up for you guys tomorrow. Um, it'll work, but it's not what I'm looking for. Where are those brushes? Weird. I have lost everything tonight. It's a mystery. I think there are two brushes I used for this enti the entire painting almost, and I don't even know where I put them. That's super odd. Tonight's theme is what can I lose? You'll work. Okay. So let's start getting some of these darks in so I can better judge values. I'm gonna grab some raw sienna and black. Now normally black isn't, and especially on something like this, would not be my go-to to make everything darker, but this actually does have a really dark area in here. I'm gonna add a bit of magenta in with my black. So it's a bit more rich. And some water, of course, to thin it out so it'll blend out nicely. There we go. I'm gonna take this clean brush that has a little bit of water on it and use that to smudge things out. 
got to be careful because it's got a decent amount of water, which means it starts to erase instead of just smudging. Thin that out. Yeah, the magenta looks so good in with that black. It kind of looks just black to me on screen, but in person, that's a much more realistic look. And this is sketchy. This isn't perfectly smooth. I've got a few little guys out here. And see that line right there? Way too bold. Let's just thin that out. Pull that out. That'll work. We've got a shadow that comes under here. Now this is going to be too thick, but watch. I could use a liner brush to do this, but being that I already have this brush out, this will make it easier. I'm just going to push that back. This brush again is a little bit damp. I'm going to load it with a bit more water because it is starting to dry. And that's why I'm able to push this back so easily. needs to be a lot thinner, so I'm going to keep pushing that. We've got a little bit of a shadow in here, a little ridge, some shading. That is way too bold, but that's no big deal. That's what I'm going to take this brush for, for and smudge that. And then I'm going to take some magenta with that black again. Let's bring some red oxide in there. I just need to make a dark, dark color from the peach I used earlier. I want a bit of a shadow right in here. I'm gonna make mine a bit more bold than what the reference photo had. Let's get a little bit more water on this second brush. Again, this brush just has water. And I'm gonna pull that. See, it's almost too much water though because look how I pretty much just erased that. I want a little bit more than that. Stop. Whoever's doing that. You guys can't hear. Someone's chewing on feet or licking something or something over there. I'm just pulling that shadow up. See how I start to create more dimension in this. I'm going to pull this right along the edge here. I'll be putting a highlight over it, which will make more sense later. I'm just lightly going over this. Now, one of the reasons this works so well is this canvas is so smooth. If you're working on a rougher canvas, that is going to be harder. You're not going to get the same look with the shading. It'll be much bumpier. Push this back. Create some of these little lines, blend those out a bit. And then we've got a shadow that goes right along the outer edge. Let's get that in. And I can use the same thing, just the magenta, black, a little bit of red oxide. This color is working really well for my shadows. but I'm gonna definitely need a bit more water on this because that is bold. We wanna tone that down some. And by some, I mean a whole lot. Actually, it'd probably be better to do a little bit more with the red oxide there on that shadow. We'll come back through. And I wanna start building this texture too. So like here, you can see those brush strokes. Good, leave them. Uh, that just gave me some free texture without a whole lot of effort. We have a tendency to want to overblend everything and it gives you a very unnatural plasticky look. When you get some brush strokes, leave them. That, that's just added detail very easily. Oops, that's a lot of paint. Let's wipe some off. See, as I streak this, I'm pulling it the direction of the shell. We want this to round out. This will look better once I get the shadow under the shell too. Same thing, curve that around. Let's pull this one in as well. I'm leaving those streaks, don't overblend. Now we've also got a darker shadow, I can use the same color, right under the shell. 
and I'm going to pull this just a bit into the sand, not crazy. We're midday here, so we don't have super crazy harsh shadows. But see how I mean, I'm just using the same colors I already used. This isn't the color of the shadow in the reference photo. That doesn't matter. I'm using colors I've used in other areas of the painting and it works. This is what I'm talking about with do not overly fuss over perfect colors. That's just not that big of a deal. And I'm going to pull that shadow out just a little bit here. Make sure to smudge that out. Okay, let's rinse this and I'm going to start bringing in some of the whiter highlights. Again, you can bid on this. The link is in the video description if you want your chance to buy this. Its starting bid is $65. It is an eight by 10. Okay, a little bit of white here. Some of these I'm not gonna blend at all. I just want them to be pretty harsh. I'll have to switch to a smaller brush in just a moment so I can get some of these bigger shadows in first. See how I fan this out where I follow the direction of the lines of that shell? It's a little too much. Let's tone that down even more. And then we go here. I'm gonna pull highlights in there and just let these fade out. Same thing I did with the shadows. I'm leaving those streaky. I'm not trying to make it perfectly smooth. And the big thing is just to keep working on it. Look as I continuously work how much better it keeps getting. Just little changes are gonna make a huge difference. You can switch to a liner brush or a round brush if it's easier for you to get these types of streaks. Okay, I am gonna switch to a liner brush now. This guy is almost finished. I like him. This will get on my wall. It might end up on my wall. If no one bids, that may happen. Okay. So I'm going to use my liner brush. This is a number two synthetic hog haired liner brush. So it's a little bit more stiff than a Taclon bristled brush. And we're going to come through here and start defining these edges. Remember the harder you push, the thicker your line will be. If you want a really thin line, you're not going to push as hard. I'm going to keep this a little bit wiggly as we move through here. Pretend you've had too much coffee which is at my actual situation tonight. Um, am I, are you whisp? Wiping your brush on a towel to lessen the amount on your brush. So I'm doing two things on my, that's a good question. Let's show you that. I've got a wet paper towel here, so I occasionally wipe it on that, but I also, hit the right button, Lisa. I also have a, move my stuff out of the way so you can see. You can see how much I've been wiping my brush on this. This is all, I've always got a paper towel and this is, well, it's half wet, half dry, just cause I keep wiping water on it too. But I always have a paper towel on my easel or under my easel so that I can very easily wipe my brush. So yes, I'm always wiping it there, but I'm also testing here. You can see my lines. I am constantly somewhere the brush gets wiped before it hits the canvas. It's such a good question. Uh, so that I don't have some big, huge glob of paint. It's a really good habit to get into. I'm glad you asked that because I didn't even think to mention it. little detail with the lines in here. Okay. 
And this is a good example. One of the things that you see a lot, or I see a lot when people submit things for critique, which I need to do one soon, um, but when we do the critiques, they're just not done yet. They're not bad, they're just not done. Look at how, I mean, where if we go back 10 minutes ago, the difference in this from just keep layering. I'm lightening this area quite a bit. And the nice thing is it helps you, if this is dark at the tip, so this is just a good design thing. If this area here, if the tip of that shell is super dark, it's gonna pull your attention right off the page. By lightening it, which the reference photo has anyway, but lightening that up, it helps keep you in this area so you're not drawn off as much. You always wanna to try to keep the viewer on your artwork as long as possible. So it almost works kind of like a page blocker instead of being, if there was something dark here, your eyes would just naturally move right off the canvas. Oops, see if there's a big thick chunk, so I've gotta wipe that off on my, my easel. I'm always thinning the paint with the, when I use a liner brush with at least a little bit of water. If you don't, it will be a thick globby mess and it is not gonna work how you're hoping. Kind of like right now. I don't know why I don't paint shells more. Every time I do, I love them so much. They're really easy to make look super realistic, but they don't actually take that much time. You guys remember I did with the water-soluble graphite, and it was so, oh, that one took a little bit more, but it looked so amazing. It's a really cool subject to paint. I'm gonna smudge that line just a bit. There we go. And I need a medium peach. Let's grab you. Go right along this edge. I'm gonna pull white back in over the top. But I wanna make the edge, the shell look a bit thicker. Also make this a bit bumpier here. Again, think caffeine. A little bit of a shaky hand is good there. I'm gonna take this with some darker magenta as well. Let's get a little bit more of a shadow right under here. Pull that out. Actually, I think what I'm gonna do is dry this let me get the white and I'm gonna dry it and put a little bit more shading and we'll be all done. The trick to making this look good, it's not about a ton of detail or the perfect color, it's your values. Light's light enough, dark's dark enough, that's it. That is all it really takes to make, oh, that's a big glob of paint, to make this look really good. Apparently I need a little bit more. There we go. right on that edge, just making that look a little bit thicker. And let's pull some straight white, make some of these really bright. Remember, if you have an area that doesn't feel light enough, no matter how much white paint you put on it, you just cannot get it to be light enough. It's probably because what's next to it is not dark enough. Make the area next to it darker, your whites will appear brighter. If, that's, if you're trying to get them lighter and you just can't. Just a 
few more definite lines and then again I'm smudging them a bit. So this is a good project for a beginner, but it also shows people get too worked up on the dry brushing everything as a beginner, that that's just what you do as a beginner. You don't need to. You can make something that looks really good because I don't like how dry brushing looks. I think that's a very, hi, I don't know how to paint method. Oh, I just got a bunch of thumbs downs. But it's something that people teach who don't know how to, to, to paint um, in a more advanced way. We'll put it that way. You can't, it's not hard to do. Just use a little bit more water, use a smoother canvas. Okay, I'm going to dry this and we'll add a little bit more detail, a little bit more shading, and we'll be done. He's just about finished. I love this painting. Okay, so you can see this edge. I think this can be a lot sharper. Now, I don't want it too sharp. I do like the softness of it, but a little bit more. And so I don't want to just make a heavy line around the edge. I, I want to just a little bit of a shadow there. That will be enough. So that brush actually should work okay. I need one to, oh no, I'll use you and then I'll blend with you. So a little bit of my red oxide. I'm gonna pull some magenta and a teeny bit of black. More magenta. Now that's obviously really harsh, so I'm gonna take a brush that's a little bit damp. Actually, this one's kind of really wet. And I'm gonna smudge that out. Look how pretty that is. Let's smudge you a little bit more. edge a little bit more defined and pull that in round the way the shell moves okay a little bit more I've got too much water on that brush let's do that one more time I've got too much water in the paint and I've got too much water on the brush that I'm blending with you've got to find a balance there okay, pull those streaks out We don't want perfectly smooth. That will not look good. It will look like a plastic toy. And you can also pull some of these shadows, same color, out into the sand because you would have a little bit of a reflection from the, the shell. So you can use that same color. And as long as what you have on there underneath is completely dry, let's say you do something, you hate it, use a brush with water, erase it, pull it right up. It'll come right up. If you're using good paint, I will say I've seen students use crappy paint and the previous layers came up too. So Liquitex Basics, never had a hard time with that. Any of the Liquitex products have always been fine. Goldens would be fine. Now, I like the Liquitex Basics because they dry very flat. So it, one, makes it easier to photograph, but also the tracing and transfer paper method works very well with this, where if you're using a higher gloss, let's say golden, and then these are considered higher end, goldens or Liquitex heavy body, Liquitex soft body, they're considered a higher end professional paint, but tracing and transfer paper does not work with it. <laughs> well, they kind of work. I shouldn't say it doesn't. It doesn't work as well. Or a charcoal pencil. And these, this just works well for my technique. So I don't choose Liquitex because they're cheap, or Liquitex Basics, I should say, because they're cheap. They just work so well for my techniques. And you guys know I will spend money on the best of the best colored pencils and the best of everything. I would with acrylics too, these just work. So it's just one of those nice, happy surprises that they happen to be really inexpensive compared to some other ones. And that's what's funny to me too. So I, I've talked about how much I dislike generic brands like Hobby Lobby's generic. People say, yeah, but we want cheaper supplies or Arteza, we want these cheaper supplies. They're not that much cheaper, if cheaper at all. A lot of these generics are the same prices as Liquitex Basics. Why wouldn't I use the good stuff? So we have a tendency to jump to these 
generics that Hobby Lobby, that Michaels, they're not good. Blix, I don't like theirs. I don't like any of those generic paints. This is about the same cost, but works so much better. Now this is not what I would use for everything. If I'm gonna do an acrylic pour, I'm gonna use Liquitex Soft Body. Um, it's, you want something that's more pigmented, so it depends on what you're doing for sure. Different techniques. If I'm gonna use a palette knife, I'm gonna use my Liquitex Heavy Body. So it's not one fits everything, but for this type of painting, for my detailed stuff, this is my preference. I wanna make this shadow just here a little bit darker. So I'm gonna pull some black in with that magenta and red oxide. I don't wanna use just straight black, that would be a bit too much. right in here and I'm barely going to smudge that not much at all and I'm smudging in this case both up to the shell and down into the sand see that just makes that that crease a little bit deeper and then that's fine there do I have anything else I want to do I think we're about done I need to sign it I dab my finger and then I'm gonna smudge it with a brush because I don't want it that dark right there. Just a few spots. I don't know why I whisper when I try to make something small. I always notice that when I edit these videos. With these darkest shadows, I am not putting them in very many places. Because if you do too much in this case, it would certainly take away from the overall look. Okay. And that is it for this guy. So you can see it's really, really easy, really fast, but you've got to pay attention to your values. Are your lights light enough, your darks dark enough? The color is fairly accurate. I think it's a little bit softer on that blue in person, but that is really close. Let me show you over here. And again, you can bid on this over at my site. What do we have? Yeah, I think it's still going... Yeah, this is still $65. If I sell this at Aqua Shell, if it doesn't sell, I will bring it, unless I decide to keep it, which I might, I would end up selling it for probably at a show, which is usually less than I would put on my site, probably about $150. So it is a good deal if you like that style. Let me pull it over here because this is always more accurate color, but there we go. I love this. I'm excited about, I always get so excited about shell, seashells. Thank you to whoever suggested this as a lesson because I am so happy with how that came out. That was fun. Definitely going to have to do some more seashell paintings because that is so pretty. Okay, let me clean uh, everything up. I'm going to be answering your questions and I'm going to start by going over the ways that I make money as an artist. Let me first put stuff away. We'll get a message from the boys first. Without treats, these puppies are so sad. Your Patreon pledge of only $4 or more gives them cookies of happiness. Act now and the bad cow gets a treat too. Oh, and you also get over 300 art lessons and a new one every single week, plus other rewards. Sign up at patreon.com slash lockery. Okay, let me, oops, I'm not quite ready there. I'm trying to move some of this stuff out of the way as I throw stuff on the floor. Okay, so ways that I make money as an artist. And as I go through this list, please let me know in the comments ways that you found to make money, especially if it's a creative way that I have not thought of. There's no way I'm gonna remember every single thing because, you know, live stream and my brain sometimes wanders as it does. So let's go ahead and start. You've got several ways that you can make money. And we often think of just the originals. You're almost no one makes money as a, makes enough to make a living as an artist, just selling originals it can happen. It's fairly uncommon. What happens is, I mean, step back and think about how much money you spend every month. What are all your expenses? Your mortgage or rent, your everything, your food bills, every single expense that you have, art supplies, include it all. Come up with that, tum, that sum. Now, how many paintings do you need to sell to, to hit that number? Can you even paint that many paintings to hit that number? In many cases, no. And it's very hard when you're selling original art to sell it to have this consistent 
buyer to constantly have a sale. So we've got to find other ways. We really need to diversify our income. So these are some of the methods I have. We have our originals. We obviously have prints. Now some of these are obviously going to be very well, obvious. So we've got prints. In addition to prints, you can have merch and things that you can sell yourself. And I want to show you some of the th things that I have. Postcards. So now these are something that I get. Th this is for my Patreon, but you can sell postcards. You can make, uh, let's say, a five pack of postcards of your art and sell that on your website, which will be coming to the website again. But you've got postcards. You can do, I've got greeting cards in here somewhere. Where are the greeting cards? Greeting cards with your artwork. So you could do an actual greeting card. You could put whatever you want on the inside. I've got my logo on, that's not in focus at all, but there's my logo on the back. But these really nice greeting cards, I get these printed at Vista Print only when they're on sale. When they're not on sale, not worth it. But if you watch for sales, which I just did, I just ordered a ton of stuff. So those of you on Patreon waiting for your March card that should have gone out in April, I just ordered, oh, they're so good. I can't wait to for you guys to see the stuff I've got ordered for you. But those are things you can sell as packs. So maybe a five pack, and it's one of the things I've always planned to do, I just haven't gotten that far, a five pack of car, different cards on my website. So that eventually will be there. But that's a def, an easy way to go. Vistaprint is fairly inexpensive, again, if they're on sale. You can have stickers. These are one of the rewards for Patreon as well. So these are actually really nice stickers and depending on how many you order at once, I wanna say when they're on sale and I order a hundred of them, it ends up being 64 cents per sticker. So if you sell them for two bucks a piece or like a sticker pack with multiple stickers, you they're actually, the quality, decent. I don't hate them, that's for sure. I like them, I'd buy them. So that's kind of my, my general rule. Would I buy it? Because if not, I'm not giving it to other people. So you can have this sort of merch very easily. You can have coffee mugs printed through sites like, and I wouldn't go with Redbubble, they are kind of screwing over right now artists apparently, but like I use Fine Art America and Spring. Spring is was previously known as Teespring. Some of you know that from YouTubers who use them. I have merch like the, um, hoodies you can have hoodies t-shirts tank tops i bought several for myself the ones from spring the ones i saw on my site they're really good so you can have merch like that any you think well what would i do on merch you could do a painting but you could also do fun sayings that other artists especially would relate to like don't drink the paint water we all say that you can steal that by the way because we all say it stuff like that funny things like that you could include in merch you're an artist don't limit yourself to just a painting and one of the things that i often do i don't know if you'll be able to see this let me pull this over here. It may not show. Stickers like this. Hands off. People ink isn't archival. And this is from one of my paintings, but I used Photoshop, chopped them out, made a different background, added text to it. So you get these fun little things, fun little sayings. These are things that you as an artist can do. You have to learn Photoshop if you don't already know it. Something like that. But lots of fun stuff there. My notes back up there. Um, let's see, where was I? Coffee mugs, pillows. I know an artist, I'm so excited because she's gonna be at Aquashella, Lazy Coffee Designs. You can find her on Instagram too. She has pillows of marine fish. Like there's one of a Bangai Cardinal that I am definitely buying on Saturday, I'm so excited. So she's got fun pillows like that. And even me as an artist, I can paint my own Bangai Cardinal, but I like her pillows, I want them. So I, if I'm willing as an artist to buy something from another artist like that or put my money into that, you know it's cool. So this is certainly cool merch like that keychains she's now got and she sells a lot of stickers she uses I think she said sticker mule is who she has her stickers done through so that might actually be higher quality better price I'm not sure I haven't looked into it myself but that's a way puzzles you can buy puzzles from fine art America they're on my site I, I have my mom test them for me to make sure that they're good because she's a puzzle freak so I always send them to her like okay see if this how, how did this prep um painting work on the puzzle. So far, they've all been great. The one thing I will say, Fine Art America, Fine Art, what? Where did that accent come from? Fine Art America is that their t-shirts printed horribly. I had a friend buy something like that. I was like, yeah, return that. that. And I took, it, took them all off my website. I cannot believe it, the ba how bad the quality was. Spring, on the other hand, amazing quality for clothing. So you do have to kind of figure out, okay, this company works well for this product. This one works well for that one. Watch reviews. See if you can find reviews for stuff. Um, puzzles, sweatshirts, t-shirts. So those are your more physical items. In addition to that, you can do art lessons, obviously, and they don't have to be online. If you're not comfortable on camera, and this has always been my primary income with art has been through teaching, whether it be in person or online. In person, I used to teach out of Hobby Lobby and Michaels years ago. I don't know how good of 
those are for teaching anymore. Last time I saw a class at Michael's, the students were like out on the floor in the open. It was not a nice little cozy environment for a lesson. They were like in the like in the store where other people are all walking by. It was kind of uncomfortable compared to the way classes used to be. So I don't know that those are good, but maybe your community center, contact your city for, uh, let them know you wanna teach classes, Talk, contact Boy and Girl Scout troops. Those are another really great way, things for kids, that's actually a really good way to get started in teaching. You can offer, some people will offer classes out of their home. They'll do private one-on-one -on -one tutorial or lessons with people that way. I've done that in the past. You're obviously gonna charge a lot more for it, but people were willing to pay for that so you can do that and in the, those cases I always went to the students home um, sometimes they would have multiple students in one location like it was a group of girls and then their friends would come and they would just have me teach at their house so that is certainly a way you can go to and you can advertise I used to be able to advertise on Craigslist I don't know if you can still do that or not or if people flag you because it's Craigslist so um, that is an option your neighborhood groups places you can advertise those sorts of things if you like I've got an HOA and there's a Facebook group as much as I hate Facebook that is one thing that's useful are those groups to keep up with whose dogs loose again or whatever but people will advertise when they're teaching classes or different things like that. You can do that too. Any sort of summer type class, and this is a really good time of the year to do those classes because people want their kids out of their house. So you can do a class at like, if you've got a park nearby, that would be an option. Um, ours with the HOA, they'll meet sometimes. There's a small group, a lady who teaches kids that will meet over by the pool. So things like that you can look into. You could do coloring books or coloring pages. This is something that I offer to Patreons. Patrons, the Aqua tier, the $14 a month or higher tier, where I, for, for coloring pages of my artwork a month, and it's actually not hard to do. There, and I'll put a link, oh, can I find it? I have to think of where it was. But if I can find it, I'll put a link to the the tutorial I used to do it in Photoshop, the way that I've been doing the coloring pages. I love the results, like I actually want to color them. So there, it's a really good way to go, but you could do that with your own paintings. You could make an entire book of that. You could sell it as a digital download where people could download it, print it, and color or paint over it. Or you could actually publish a book. That would be really nice income for you to have that just kind of a passive income. People just buy as you go. Some websites will print on demand. It you don't make as much doing that, but you don't have to put the money up front. So that's one of the reasons print on demand sites tend to be good. That's why I personally use Fine Art America for my prints that sell online. The good thing with those are I don't have to ship them to anybody. Any, any of you guys waiting for your paintings right now, you know I take a while to get things shipped. I just don't have to, like time is an issue. Well, in this case, I was also making sure that the fixative was totally dry because I'm new to the oil pastel fixative, but I just wanted to be safe. But this way, if somebody buys a print, now I don't make a lot of money. I might make 75 to $150 a month selling prints. It, it's not gonna pay all my bills, but it's one additional thing. All of these ways are ways that I make money, not just one. When you add them all together, then, it, then you're making enough. So I like Fine Art America too, because I was able to embed it into my website. I don't have to send you to their site in order to make a purchase, so that's a nice thing. You've got affiliate links. So if you've got a website, which you should, that is such a must. Facebook, social media, those are not your website. You have no control of when they decide, no, we think you might have violated a rule, even if you didn't, and you're banned. So it happens all the time. Sometimes people people get their account back, sometimes they don't. So you wanna have your own site. This is your hub where you can buy, people can buy anything from you. So you can have affiliate links on there. Sign up with Amazon, you can sign up, Blick I think has it. If you're doing, let's say a blog post on your website, telling about the supplies that you use, you can have affiliate links to all of that. I might make, I don't know, depends on how many affiliates I have going at a time. I may make $500 a month doing affiliate links. And it's easy, it's just linked on there. And that's through multiple, it's not just one thing. I've got you know affiliates from a few different things. So that adds up. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, obviously. But a great way to have a little bit of an additional income. And it's not like you're having to push products because I'm not comfortable doing that unless it's something I use. So I only link things that I actually use. I'm not having to be like, hey, buy this health supplement that's probably a horrible placebo because the company who contacted me is shady. I get contacted for those a lot. But it's not, I don't have to do any of that. All I have to be, like as I'm painting, supplies for what I'm using are in the video description. Supplies for what I'm using are on my website. And it's just an easy way for one more little egg in your basket of incomes. That isn't how that saying goes. You knew what I meant. We've got ads. You could actually put ads if you want on your website. Now I don't because in the early days of websites, I had Angel Fire. Any of you guys remember the old Angel Fire websites? Those ads were so um, inappropriate. 
I don't want those on my site. So I don't personally do them. I, most of the time it should be okay, but Google, you can do ads on your website and make some decent money just from the site you're al you already have anyway. So that is an option, not an option I've chosen. So that's the one I think thing I'm suggesting tonight that I didn't personally do, but it's an option. Sponsorships. So let's say there is a product that you like. I've done sponsorships for, I'm trying to think when, uh, there was a tablet that was pretty cool. They sent me to do digital art. I thought it was cool. I liked it. I did a spot. They paid me, they gave me the tablet. And then I think they paid me, I don't know, hundred, I don't know, remember what it was. It's not usually a lot, a hundred or two hundred dollars, depending on how many viewers you have. But that is, if you've got a YouTube channel, that is an option for making money. Now you can do things an ad, uh, like a spoken ad in in the middle of your videos that has nothing to do with art you don't have to stick with art supplies i personally do just because that's what i'm comfortable with but it is one more additional thing that you could make money doing commissions this is pretty obvious people portraits animal portraits houses you can draw houses somebody buys a new house someone who wants to give them a housewarming gift what a great gift a photo of the house a, a drawing it can just be a pencil sketch of the house people love those like and they're actually really fun to do but and good practice for buildings but that's a really cool thing you can do too you can take commissions now how do you find buyers and then of course the lessons you can do digital you can do in person how do you get people how do you find the customers because you sure you've got all of these things that you can offer where do you find them you've got a few places obviously your own website and you will get traffic randomly finding your site but ideally i want to advertise that site i want to push people from social media platforms so whether that be facebook although facebook is really useless uh, what my one of my last posts i posted out of thirty-three thousand people they shared it with 900 and told me if I want to pay $10, they'll give, they'll share it with another 900. So it worked out to where it would cost me about $300 per post on Facebook for them to show it to everybody who followed me. No, no, Facebook, that is not happening. So um, yeah, Facebook's not the best place to be building your business is the point there. But Facebook groups, MeWe groups, MeWe, obviously we don't have as many people there. We do in our art group. Our art group is huge, by the way, over on MeWe. So if you're looking for something good and you don't want Facebook, there you go. But, and no ads, which is amazing. But with Facebook, you could join groups. So like I said, the HOA group, a neighborhood group, if you've got a mom's group, if you've got, like with me, I sell marine art and I'm in some fish groups. They have Vendor Friday where every Friday they let, they'll let they allow you to post things you have for sale, whether it be prints. Can you hear the dart frogs? I rearranged their tank or cleaned up their tank last night and moved some plants. They're happy about it. That has nothing to do with this video. Move along, Lisa. So. You can, um, where was I? I lost my train of thought because yay, frog. Um, let's see, digital lessons, your own. Oh, so social media though. I want to post on social media to try to get people back to the site as much as possible. Or Etsy, you could do Etsy. You could do, there are some other alternatives, Etsy and eBay. I don't personally use them anymore. I did. I don't like the way all the Etsy's been moving, but I do know people who, who do use it and are successful, but every person I can think of who's successful on Etsy, it's because they're sending their own followers to that, to that. So like there's a girl, Warren Keys Emporium, I buy her, she makes these really cool little keys with wings. They're gorgeous, I love them. They're all over my office. I get those from her and she'll spend two months making a big batch and then she announces a release. And when she releases them, because people have waited for months to get them, I just spit because I'm a classy lady. Um, I don't know why I had to point that out to you. But anyway, when she releases them, everyone's so excited, they rush, they sell out within minutes. What a great way. I know a guy who's doing that right now for prints. He's posting, I actually just saw this, his big print release or print drop is coming. And it's like, that is genius. Get everyone all excited and there's gonna be, especially if you're doing limited edition prints that you can sell for even more, that's a great way. Now I mentioned prints, I mentioned print on demand. You can also do G Clay today. I love the quality I've gotten from them. So if you are willing to ship it yourself, you can get a higher quality than what you would get through say Fine Art America. It's just that now you have to ship it and that takes more time. But you could also make a bigger profit if you are printing it yourself and shipping it yourself, you are going to make a much, much larger profit per print than what you would have on Fine art america the downside is that now let's say it gets lost in it lost or damaged in shipping you've got to deal with that whereas if fine art america does it it's their problem they'll sort through it with the customer sorry my eye itch is really bad oh allergies are so fun right now anyway i finally stopped sneezing so bonus there um 
Let's see, we talked about the, and you can even, I know that Instagram has a thing where you can have your shop, like if you had a Shopify thing, you can tie that in with Instagram. That is an option as well. I personally don't. I never change my Instagram to a business account. So apparently if you do, you get even less viewers. So I've heard, don't know if that's still true. Probably because it's Facebook, but pushing people from social media platforms. If you're on Twitter, if you're on, in my case, MeWe, which is so much better, you can link things to your site to get attention. But those groups are one of the best ways I found to get attention forums. I use, forums aren't as popular. I see them more for, I, or I at least use them for saltwater. So like Humblefish, I, I post regularly about my fish anyway. So they don't want you to just join and spam them with your business post. I'm a part of the, the forum. I'm commenting on posts regularly, but they also allow me to share my artwork. And so I could potentially get business that way. If you've got to check, check with the forums and rules and ask them if there's a way for you to, to advertise your artwork, but try to find something that's very specific to what you do. Are you into horses? Go to a horse show, sell your work. Some of the horse shows, different horse events, rodeos, different things will have vendors in there. Get a booth at one of those. When I used to do pet portraits or dog portraits specifically, you could set up a booth at a dog show. The, these are people who are going to want like that. They're really, trust me, they're into pet portraits. That's who I sold most of my pet portraits to or dog show, my dog show friends. I say friends, acquaintances, I don't know. Word of mouth got out with Italian Greyhound people and that's where I was getting a lot of my, my work were from the dog show group, from forums, from online. Now, a lot, like I said, a lot of the, the online groups do not allow you to share business posts, but some of them will allow you for one day, just check the rules. So you want to find where those customer base are going to be. Again, with me, with the marine work, we've got Aquashella coming up this weekend. I will be there. I've got a booth there because there's my target audience right there. Those are the people who are going to be interested in the octopus paintings or octopus prints or the fish. That is Perfect. That actually I find to be more useful than normal art fairs. So you've got your general art fairs, art shows. Those I find to be much, much harder to get a sale, the art and craft shows. Most of the people at, in, even at Aquashella, most people are walking around, they're like, oh, I only want to spend, you know, $20, $50. They don't want to spend a whole lot. So it's harder to sell my, I don't even bring my originals anymore. I bring one original just as a show off piece, an attention grabber to Aquashella. Other than that, it's prints. Because most people not even going to buy, it, it's not even worth, worth the risk of damage in travel for me to bring my originals to shows. I only do the one show a year, but I bring my prints to those because most people don't want to pay a ton. Now, one of the things that is nice when you do the in-person shows, in the past it was a problem because most of us only could take cash. Well, now, because you can do, PayPal has a little card stripe thing, the uh, Square, is it Square? Stripe, one of those, they have it as well. You've got a card reader that you hook up to your phone and people can pay with their credit card right then and there. And so you can get bigger sales now than you used to be able to. So that's a really big, big bonus. But be aware when you look at the art shows, how much is the fee to have a booth? I do not make that much at these shows. They're fun. They're so much work. And with me and my autoimmune disorders, like the, the fatigue and all that, like the, it takes so much out of me. It normally, I do Aquashella because it's fun and I like the people who run it, but I don't do a lot of art shows. It's just too much. I find I do better just selling online, honestly, but that's me. And I've already kind of, I've built a name for myself. So that makes it a little, a little bit easier. But when you're newer, starting at these art shows, that can be a way to start building that name for yourself. So that would be a great way to go as well. You can of course sell your paintings or display them in like coffee shops and stuff like that. I used to, I don't anymore. It is a very, very high risk for the paintings because you've got theft, you've got kids throwing food at the wall. Like they're just, it is very risky and I don't find it to be worth the risk to the artwork. So it's not something that I personally do anymore, but that is also an option. People almost never buy from the, every once in a while, not enough, not worth it enough for me to go through the hassle to drop it off. And then the risk of, does it get ruined or stolen or whatever? So that's another option, but it's not one of the better ones, I think. Um, let's see. You can of course make videos selling and the nice thing with videos is like people are more comfortable buying from me. I found when I started doing the videos because they, they see me, they can trust me. I'm a person. I'm obviously not scamming people. I take forever to get stuff shipped. It's a whole other personal issue, but they get their work. They usually get bonuses because I take so long. But anyway, that is a nice thing to build confidence in the buyer of who you are, that you're a real person, whether that be doing reels on YouTube or on, on Instagram or YouTube shorts even. You don't have to do big videos, but just something where people see you and then link that over to your website. So again, you're you're showing them I'm a real person. We've got, let's see, and we've covered the affiliate links. I've got my notes over here. Um, you can also show the process. You could just show varnishing. My painting showing me varnish or video showing the shorts 
Let's try that in English one more time. The videos where I've the sh just, my brain is broken from too much caffeine. I normally don't drink this much, but the videos where I, I have actually shown varnishing in just a YouTube short or an Instagram reel, those usually perform better than my other ones. So you don't have to go all crazy. You don't even have to show yourself in them, although I do like that and I do recommend you show yourself so people can see you're a real person. It is an option for those of you who don't wanna be on camera. Um, we talked about lessons, affiliate links, ads. Um, we did that. You can also, the last thing that I've done where I can make some money, not a lot, but you can write sometimes articles for magazines. So, you know, I've written occasionally, I'll do a lesson for colored pencil magazine. I usually do one a year of those. They will pay for that. There are a lot of opportunities for you as an artist to make, a, make money, but you need to find all of these different ways. And it's not that any specific one I'm putting all of my, like it, it sounds like a lot, it sounds overwhelming, but it's a little here, a little there. My lessons are obviously the, the bulk of what I do, but it's a little bit all over the place. So it is more manageable, but this is how you're going to make a living as an artist. It's probably not going to be simply from selling the art. It's great when you do sell the art, but it is very hard to make a consistent enough income to do so. So those are some of the things that have worked for me. Again, share with me in the comments what you have done to, or whatever ideas you have for making money as an artist. Okay, now we have your questions. So let's go through here. Um, I do have an affiliate link, Nick, for the Find Miss Sprayer. It sh if it's not in the video description, I'm dumb and I just did a bad job and I'll put one in when I edit this video. Um, let's see. Sound is cutting out again. Never mind, see surface. On. Okay. Those were old comments that I looked and I, they didn't come through until all just now. Um, what is the tool I use for tracing and transfer paper? That is a little stylus. You can get the nail ones on Amazon and they're cheaper, but let me show you. It's just this little stylus tool, a nail dotting tool. You can look up that, that'll work as well. They're fairly inexpensive. You could also use like an old ballpoint pen that doesn't have ink in it anymore. I wouldn't use one that has ink because if that leaks through, you do not want that on your painting. But that could potentially work as well. But yeah, just these little cheapy stylus. Styluses, stylus, I don't know how to word that. Okay. Ken, whoop, come back. Ken said, I was wondering, how do you balance critiquing your own art and improving versus admiring and appreciating it? I finish art and know it's good, but I don't, good, but don't like it even though people tell me it's great. Thanks so much for the videos. They're so helpful. Thank you. Um, how do you balance improving versus admiring? I do both. I don't even know that it's a balance. I do both pretty equally. Every single thing I do, I'm gonna sit there and go, oh, I need to fix it. Actually, on this one, I do have a little mark there I need to fix. Um, I'll find things that I would improve on next time that I want to adjust, but also I'm so proud of myself. I just made something that didn't exist. That painting, this shell, did not exist an hour ago. Eh, hour and a half ago. It was not a thing. I just made something that did not exist and no matter what, I'm gonna be excited about that. And even if you don't like what you painted, you are one step closer to your end goal. You're always, everything adds to you improving your artwork. So every single thing is worthy of being excited and being proud of. And at the same time, you're just gonna be a realist and I can always do better. I'm always going to improve. This is something that I would change. This is what I wanna do differently next time. But also, I just made something that didn't exist before and I am proud of that. You have both. That is definitely, I guess, in, what is it? Uh, have your cake and eat it too. I don't know, Some, I never get these sayings right. I think that's it. Let's see, how frequently do you spray or spritz water on your palette to prevent it from drying? I don't spray my palette at all. It doesn't need it. I mean, I just scrape it away if it starts to dry, but <coughs> but like as I'm mixing paint, I'll have to scrape that away occasionally, but I'm never misting it or spraying it. It's really, that seems to me like an added unnecessary step that I would not worry too much about. My canvas is one thing, because that needs to be smooth. On the cat palette, I don't do that. I don't worry about that at all. Good question. Um, Karen said, speaking about values, would you consider doing a video on Grise? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I've already got some. I have several where I've, I've started that way. It's not specifically on that, but I mean, I've got several videos where I've started in just black and white or sepia and white. So I do have some. 
Uh, let's see. Lily said, idea for next time, fur on a long haired cat or wool on a sheep. How to? That could be good. I think in charcoal would make for a good like lesson on fur. That's a maybe. Um, Siren, eventually. That's an eventually, not a maybe. It's sometime I will do that. Uh, let's see. Sheila said, are you wiping? Okay, I got that one earlier. Siren said, what I love about you is that you remind people to just try it, do it. You can paint over it. You can keep fixing it. You can start over. <laughs> Thank you. Jason said, when do you feel there is enough detail in the art to feel that it is complete? Basically, when can I hang this on my own wall and I'm not gonna wish I had changed something? When I can, put, when I can look at that and go, I would hang that on my wall like this shell that I kind of want to keep. It'd be so pretty in a white frame. Oh, that would look good in my, oh. Did anyone bid on that yet? Because it's still $65 last I checked. So if you want to bid, it is there, but I'm liking this one. But anyway, that's my thing. Can, would I put this on the wall or would I want to change something? Would I want to make a highlight? Would I want to make something a little brighter or change something? That's when I know it's not done yet. When I, whether it be detail, whether it be values, whatever it needs to be, could I hang this? Could Would I varnish this right now is another one. Because once I varnish it, it's done. I'm not going back over it. You can't, it's that, it'll, it is over. Would I be willing to varnish this right now? Or do I feel like I need to wait until, because I've done this so many times. Well, I don't always varnish a painting until it sells anyway, just because if I need to do touch-ups, if something gets scraped and I can fix it before I varnish and set it, ship it off. But also if I need to photograph it again. But the other thing is once it's varnished, it's done, that's it. Would I be comfortable varnishing this right now? Yes, I, oh, I need to sign that. Then we can't, then it's good, it's done. If I would not be comfortable because I think I might wanna change something, it's not done. So that, there's another good way. Okay. Art of Raven D said, your water soluble graphite seashell drawing painting got me sold on the pencils. That was an amazing piece you did, thank you. Alice said, would you draw one of your frogs next week? Maybe with one or two butterflies. I wouldn't be able to lift the butterflies out of it. I could do a frog. That is definitely a possibility. Lily said, can you check on my address? Not getting the extra stuff. Where do I check this? I think she's referring to Patreon, Nick. Uh, oh, that was Nick's comment. For Patreon, um, message me on Patreon so that I can double check what your address is. You can check in your own account settings, but you can message me and I can check too and make sure everything is right. Because if you're not getting them and you should be getting them, because it depends on what tier you're on, I can look up and see what you have. And if you've not been getting them and I owe you past ones, I will definitely resend those. So yeah, we need to message me on, fa on, on it, uh, I can't talk, words are hard. Message me on Patreon because that's the easiest way for me to look up your account. Like right now, I wouldn't be able to look it up through this information. I need it like on Patreon so I can click your name and then see. But we will get you taken care of. Art of Raven D said, I started using pixels again last night and found out they added kids clothes and it made me uncomfortable seeing my drawing on a onesie I have to out of appar on apparel sales. Yeah, that was, that was definitely, yeah, there's some, some interesting, <laughs> and especially in your case, that's hilarious. Also, good call. I approve of you making that choice. Um, let's see, Nick said, let's see. Hi, Lisa, I just, oh, no, sorry, this came from, uh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Lorax said, hi, Lisa, I just got a botched tattoo from this artist. I was very polite to ask if he can redo it and he refused. I feel so defeated. Isn't the job of an artist to make the client happy? Yeah, tattoo artists are interesting. You get some that are just so good with customer service and they're so good with their art and so good with everything and making them happy. And just like any other art, you get some that are just trash. They do a bad job. They don't stand behind their work. I mean, how many people, you, you see work, Reddit, I always use that as an example. You look at these paintings and you look at customer or their attitudes, whether it be complaints, like one of the things that always gets me, I see this occasionally from commission artists complaining about their customers. One, never complain about your customers or clients online ever, even if you're justified, because it makes you look bad no matter what. Now, you may say, Lisa, I've heard you say, I don't know why I have to talk to myself in third person like that, but I, you know, I have said, I, I have complained or commented on problems with customers or clients I've had with commissions because I don't take them anymore. So I kind of consider myself out of that so I can share some of my experience with you guys as a learning thing. But as far as like your average drama of, oh, this customer or this client's making me so mad, they did this, they did that, never ever ever do that. That is bad customer service. That makes you look so bad, even if you're completely in the right. But I have seen this with artists where they're complaining about the client because they want their work done and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, you 
told them you'd be done two weeks ago. They don't care that your car broke down, that you broke your toe, that this, that, that you keep having these continuous excuses. They paid for something, you gave them a deadline. If you can't fit your deadline or if there's even a chance, you always, always overshoot on the deadline, by the way, if you take commissions. I always will tell somebody it's gonna take an extra couple of weeks, an extra month, and if you're early, great. But don't, don't, yeah, it, you, you got to give yourself some, some wiggle room there because the client is going to be very mad when you gave them, think of when you've hired somebody to come do something, let's say someone to come fix plumbing or whatever, and they don't show up. How mad are you? It is no different than art. You may think it's not different, but it is because if they bought that as a gift for somebody, I say this as somebody who never ships stuff on time, but if they bought that as a gift, they have the right to be mad at me. 100%. That is on me and I better make it up to them. I'm gonna send them a free painting. I, I've done that when I was like a week overdue. I am, you're gonna get some extras. But you, artists, they're like any other customer service. Some are just gonna be trash and it sounds like the, the tattoo artist you're dealing with is one of those that are just trash. I wouldn't even try to have them fix it at this point. They did a bad job in the first place. You think they're gonna make it better? I would go to somebody else. I would talk to, unless it's something like the color fill just didn't stick all the way and it's a simple thing. But if the whole tattoo, you're not really thrilled with it, I would find, I would spend the extra money. That's a tattoo, that is a big deal. Spend the extra money and find somebody with a better reputation because that one obviously has shown you that they're trash. I would also leave a bad review, but that's just me because I'm a jerk. Well, I want to save other people from my, th that sort of experience, but anyway, just a warning too, if you leave a bad review on something like Google or whatever, they will come back and make a comment and try to make it sound like you're a crazy person. You know, be prepared for that. That happens. Um, let's see. Janet said, hi Lisa, I'm wondering if you put a sealer of some kind on your finished watercolor paintings. Watercolor, no, that is just, it needs to be framed behind glass. It is done um, when it's dry. Like it's not gonna smudge or anything, so I don't feel it needs to be sealed. I wanna seal my oil pastels because those smudge. I'm gonna put a varnish over an acrylic painting because that is not hung behind glass, so that needs to be protected. Colored pencils I don't varnish unless, I will put a fixative, a final fixative over them if I use powder blender, or if I've been working with sanded, or, um, on sanded paper or with pan pastels because that should be sealed because it's kind of powdery and it'll smudge. But for watercolor, nope, I don't put anything. Uh, Tammy said, I agree with you on dog portraits. I started attending art fairs and found more come to my booth, more for the pet portraits and have been able to get commissions. Yeah, it is one of the best places. You want to keep in mind when you're selling things, where is your target audience? Just about anything you do, there's going to be an audience for it. You need to find it. Are you painting and drawing cars? You need to go to car shows and set up a booth and you're gonna to have to pay. In most cases, some will actually let you do it for free just because they want that kind of thing at their event, but you may have to pay but you can get business that way. Make sure you've got business cards to send with them and your business card should be very, very simple. I should do a video just on designing business cards, but it should be very, very, very simple. Your name, your contact, your website. That's it, not eight different emails and every social media you're on. Keep it as simple as possible. They can find my social media through, I mean, you may wanna put, like, let's say you're most active on Facebook or Instagram, I might put that, but don't put, five different social media platforms they can find you on. It gets, it's too little, it's too busy. One side of the card I like to have a painting, one of my paintings are drawn. So if I'm at a car show, I don't do cars, but let's say I was at a car show. I want a car, I want something that they're gonna be impressed with. With Aquashella, I've got a marine painting and that is what I hand out to people so they remember who I was and the other side will have my information. Just basic information as ideal. Let's see. Dalton Soul said, what is the main difference in choosing between the Liquitex heavy body and basic? So the heavy body, it's thick, like really thick, chunky, and it dries super fast. Like it's so annoying to paint with because it dries fast. Great when you're painting with a palette knife and that's what I would choose the heavy body for is painting with a palette knife. The pi it's way more pigmented and it's way thicker. Whereas the Liquit Liquitex Basics, it takes longer to dry. I can blend and mix and it'll stay like on my palette. will stay wet there for a decent amount of time where less than half that amount of time, my heavy body is already dried. So it's a lot more difficult to work with because of that dry time. But again, if you're working with a palette knife, you're doing thick, chunky paint, the heavy body is what you wanna go with. Second vote for the frog. Okay, next week is a frog, two votes. That I'm counting is good. But if you have other ideas, let me know too, because I've got, you know, we do this every week. I need to write this down. No, I'll, pro I'll remember, this is written in here, I'll remember. Um, let's see, starting artist collective said my vote for a cat. I have two. Okay, so we are gonna have to have a cat soon too. And then another one, Karen, cat whisperer. Uh, Joseph, cat, 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 vote from each of mine. <laughs> LOL. What is this? What is, um, excuse you, it has been a while though. Do you feel sad and lonely and hungry? Am I starving you? Okay, fine, I'll give you a quick treat. 
I'm rewarding them for bad behavior. Apparently now cat, cat, cat means treat. But I mean, I can't just send them away. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Wade, for the goobers. Okay, go lay down. That's it. That's it. That's your only time of telling me you, nope, nope, nope. Lay down. Keep going. I know, brother's in the way. Wade, down. Can you not lay down while you chew? Is that not going to work out? Good boys. Um, so yeah, we'll do a cat. So frog next week, cat the following week. <laughs> Art by MB said for the babies. Okay, super chat time. It worked. Look at that. Thank you so much. Okay, you get an extra. You want extra? Okay, you're good boys. Thank you again for the slobber. You're good boys. Just so sweet. That's all you get though. Go lay down. Go lay down. Lay down. Yeah, more comments for the cat. Sally wants a cat too. Okay, so I will, the cat will probably be, I'm thinking in charcoal, if we're gonna do long hair, it'll be a really good lesson for fur. Charcoal's the, one of the easiest method, ways for me to teach fur, but I'm thinking that will give us the best result. Thank you again, Art by MB. I think that will give us the, I just got goosebumps over, a suit. I can't say the word, because they'll know, because um, they speak English, or artist. Uh, they speak YouTuber, is what they speak. Uh, let's see. I would go for a hissing cockroach. I'm not going to paint that on people. Uh, for the Mas Madagascar was my first trip out of the U.S. Speaking of, I just bought a bunch of dubias because that's one of the things I feed my baby dragon. So I keep them in my home, but those aren't the same kind at all. Also, not happening. Said fat greyhounds. Boys, you want a super chat? Both their heads just popped up. They're like, uh, you, you, are you serious? Are you really going to give us another? Thank you, not happening. <laughs> They want fat greyhounds, what the heck? Do you hear that? They're trying to make you fat. See, mom never feeds us, these good boys. They don't get treats all day long or anything. Go lay down, good boys, down, down, down. They're like, no, we'll just stay here. We'll just wait here for more. That's all we're gonna do. Gibson, good boy. Slowest racing dogs ever. Uh, one of my friends had commented about greyhounds are thinking they'd be too active. I'm like, oh gosh, no, they're 45 pound, or what is it, 45 mile per hour couch potatoes. So yeah, they are not an active breed, except for YouTube treats. Oh, that's a good way to word it, YouTube treats. They don't know that word yet. Uh, let's see. Dolphin Soul said, love to learn how to do palm fronds, tropical leaves. What, what medium, Dolphin Soul? I can definitely do that. That actually makes, palm trees are really good for live streams because they're super, super easy. So just let me know what medium you're looking for. Actually, I am gonna have to start writing these down because you guys are giving me a lot of good ideas. Do I have a pen anywhere over here? You'd think as an artist, I would have a writing utensil somewhere. I have a bunch of white charcoal pencils. That is not helpful at all. Oh, wait, is this? Oh, I have a pen. Okay, so we've got frog, then we're gonna do a cat. And we're not gonna do a cockroach because no one will like ever come and watch my videos again. Um, let's see. And then we have palm trees. Let me know the medium. Um, let's see. Sonic the Hedgehog said, do they watch Westminster Dog Show? No, not this time. I don't have TV. I used to watch it myself all the time because I used to show dogs. So I love watching that, like love watching it. But I did not watch anything this year because I don't have TV. Um, acrylic or ink tents. Okay. I might do ink. I'm thinking ink tents just because I've done acrylic palm trees. We'll see. We'll see what I, I come up with. Um, we want, not happening once, a palm tree acrylic sunset. So we'll do both. We'll do another one, just the acrylic sunset. Okay. I'm writing all of this down. Like I'm, I'm taking this serious, guys. This is what will be coming up. You're making my job easier because when I, I, every time I go to plan the next live stream, I will spend an hour trying to think of something and it just, yeah, uh, let's see, a cat and frog sunbathing under palm trees. That's a little bit elaborate for a live stream. I don't think I could get that done in an hour. I like the idea though. Uh, let's see, Art of Raven D said, I found it fun to paint roaches, did once, but Lisa needs viewers, so it looks like it's a name for the suggestion. Yeah, no, 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 go lay down. Happy doesn't always mean that. Lay down, bad cow. 
he was sure, he runs over but when he gets told to go lay down it's like the I'm like a, a kid just as slow as possible um yeah there's certain subjects like I really like spiders I love I got story time because we're at the end of the live stream anyway I got to hold one I found a big huge black jumping spider well they're not huge they're like less than a they're like the size of this one was probably between a dime and a nickel. But I found him in the lawn. I picked him up, like, shooed him onto my hand and picked him up. We had a little chat. And then I put him on a plant. I love jumping spiders. Um, found one today. Super cute. I would love to paint them, but I definitely think it would creep way too many people out. And that's, well, I kind of roll my eyes at things like bees freak people out or um, honeycomb was freaking somebody out. Uh, a spider, I, I get. Enough people are have a thing about spiders that I, I, I won't push it. I won't, I won't freak people out. Um, let's see. Dolphin Soul said, you know, we'll buy the Ink Dance Originals now. Um, a seahorse. I could definitely do a seahorse on one of these. I like it. You guys have got great ideas. This is helpful to me. Um, let's see. Anything beach, ocean, wave. Art by MB, what medium? Wait, no. I think actually for an ocean or wave, that would probably need to be acrylics just to get it done in time. Never mind. You're stuck with acrylics. I could probably do... Yeah. Oh, and somebody says seahorse, like the seahorse. Um, let's see. I want a color bl uh, blue tarantula. They're beautiful. Yeah, they're, I, the pink toes. I really like the pink toes. I've thought about it, but I'm like, I really don't need more critters to take. Like, I have so many animals, and it gets to where, like, a large portion of my day is just caring for my zoo and I love them but you also get to a point where you're not enjoying them because you're just spending so much time on maintenance um let's see seahorse yeah seahorse is definitely coming Art Bambi said I have two jumping spiders Vanilla and Ember oh I love them so much the one it was a bold or a daring um it's same one same common names that I found today he was so cute me and my husband sit there talking to him when we see him outside we're like poking at, not poking but like using our fingers like hi trying to talk we're such dorks um, maybe a starfish. That's actually good. You guys like all the, you're going for all the summer stuff. Although, I mean, it's Dolphin Soul, so, of course. Um, you, acrylic, okay, good, art by MB. So that's what yours, that will be for sure, because it's easier. A crab, I think I could probably, I don't know if I could get it done in a live stream, though. I really wanted to do like a purple pincher crab, a hermit crab. Any hermit crab, I think they're so cute, but it's, that's a lot of work for a live stream. I'm not, I don't think I could get it done. Too many legs. Manatee, I could do. Seriously, this is my list for the next several weeks. I'm just going to go down the road. This is, I love you guys right now. I mean, I love you all the time, but extra right now because you're doing my job. A horse at sea wearing water wings. <laughs> um, let's see, starfish, lots of different kinds. Love to see mixed media pieces. I can do that. Flamingo. I can do a flamingo if it's more stylized. What? Flamingo? Flamingo. Pretend you know how to spell Lisa. Um, watercolor jellyfish. You guys definitely have summer on the brain. Flamingos, okay, we got that. Let's see, we're definitely feeling summer vibes. Yeah, also I love giraffe or, <coughs> sorry, allergies. allergies are like, yeah. Um, but that, yeah, giraffe I could do, I think. That'd probably be a Patreon video. I think I could do a giraffe, maybe. I think if I did it stylized, kind of like the flamingo, I think I could do that. Pelican, I think that might be, maybe. I'm gonna write it down. If I find the right reference photo, I might be able to simplify it enough that I could do it in a live stream. One of the reasons that I can do a flamingo more likely is I've done a million of them, so I'm faster at it. Pelicans, I've not done much. Have I done any? I think I did one. Maybe. So that's a maybe. Would love for you to do a colored pen colored charcoal. I only have black and white, and then I can add colored pencil to it. But I could certainly do that. What about a, what? Verticular pencils? I don't know what that is. Second, the flamingo, so we've got a lot of that. Watercolor. Oh, that's what, it, what watercolor pencil. What, yeah, you know what? I've not done watercolor pencils in a while. So let's add that. Um, tufted, tufted puffin in acrylic. Tufted puffin, puffin. Let's 
That may be hard. It'll depend on what reference photo I can find. I don't think there's that many. Frog legs. No, Jason, there's no frog legs. You and your frog legs. Karen said, heron of any kind, love them. That might be a little more of a challenge. If it's, again, though, if I do like a pop art stylized thing, I can. So we'll write that down. Seagull, same. That's a maybe. I'll write it down, though, if I can find the right photo. And I think, let's see. Yeah, I don't think there's any bids. At least I'm not getting notifications for the um, painting. So you've still got, if you want to bid on this for $65, it's an 8 by 10 acrylic. That is over on my website. If anyone is interested, link is in the video description. And let's see, glass of wine, acrylic, or watercolor. Got that written down. Spoonbill versus a flamingo. I have a lot of spoonbill photos. A, fo a flag for the 4th of July, maybe. And that's kind of a fun lesson on how to get the fabric to fold. So that could be helpful no matter like what country you wanna make your flag for, that may be helpful. I like it. Um, JT said, what exercises or methods do you recommend for increasing my speed in acrylics and oils? Increasing speed, simply paint more. That's it. The more you paint, the, the faster you're not. You don't, don't try to be faster, just paint more. You're naturally going to become faster. Like when I started painting, my goal is never to get this fast at it. But I've been doing it for 30 years and apparently I paint as fast as I talk. And it just, it naturally, I got faster and faster the more I did something. So that is just one of those things that comes with time and paint more. That, that is it. You can of course speed your time by doing your underpaintings in acrylic and then oil on top. That's one way to speed it up instantly. Plant with fairy lights like the one behind you. I don't know how I would do that. Well, it would have to be airbrush, maybe. I'll have to think about that. I need to do like a, it'd be fun to do a um, night forest with fireflies. I'm gonna write that down myself. I'm giving myself ideas. I could show you one firefly without an airbrush and then do the rest with the airbrush to speed it along. Um, let's see. Lots of people like Alice's suggestion. Okay, well, I'll have to figure out how to do that, like how to get a good reference photo to make that a painting. Um, let's see. Dalton Soul said, on your shell painting, you said it's a smooth canvas, but it looks bumpy in the on the blue. Is it just me? Um, I don't, I think it's just you. I mean, I don't see any bumps. I mean, the sand, but that's just sand. But in the blue, no, I'm not seeing it. Actually, you know what? I want to do one more thing on this that I forgot about that I had wanted to do. We are going to add one last step to this. Move all my stuff below. I totally forgot I wanted some blue highlights. We're going to do just a quick while we finish this up. Starving Artist Collective said, I was spoiled for Mother's Day with a box set of Derwent Light Fast pencils. So now I'm interested in any of the above subjects with the Derwent Light Fast. Nice, congratulations, that is awesome. I would love to know how to do out of focus background, all the circles and different colors. So you know what we could, yeah, maybe a bokeh background and then the next week do the subject, a subject on it. That is a possibility. Does anyone know where to see fireflies in real life? I've always wanted to see them and I never did. My old apartment was really cool. We had a like a creek that ran behind it and you could go back there in the nights in June, in July, I think. I know June, maybe it started in May, but you, there were fireflies out there at night. That was so like, just magical is a good word for it. It was amazing. I'd never seen them before. I, no, I take it back. I saw them one time at my parents, or my in-laws house, not my parents, in Frisco. 
um, Texas, they had fireflies one night. It was right before a storm. They just popped out in the lawn. It was so weird. We'd never seen them before. Only happened the one time. But um, yeah, this there was a creek. If you've got a creek when it would get dark, you know, right at around dusk. And it wasn't that long. It was only for, God, right before the sun went down and maybe for another half hour after. I'm trying to think. It's been a few years. But it was amazing. It was so amazing. Okay, I'm taking some of that aqua color. And I just want a little bit, totally forgot to do this. What this is going to do is pull him right into that background. It doesn't even need a lot. Just a little bit of a reflection from that background. That's it. Let me dry that. And it's the exact same color I used from the water. I'm not introducing any new colors. Just that little, little bit of extra. You got a critical error on the website. Tried to bid. Ugh. Try refreshing it. Sometimes that works. I don't know how to fix it. I don't know why that happens sometimes. Um, if that doesn't work, message me after and I'll just make you a separate listing. The website heard Lisa regarding to keep it on her wall. I guess, yeah, I guess so. Um, wow, that's annoying. Yeah, if it doesn't get any bids, I mean, I can't do anything about it if somebody does manage to bid because when I've had the critical errors, it's not for everybody. And so I don't know why, I don't know how to fix it. And if it doesn't sell, then message me. Um, that's not it. That is not my website. Yeah, okay, there is a bid that came through, so that won't work um, from, it doesn't tell me who it was. Somebody bid. Okay, you got it, thank God. Okay, then I don't feel bad. Because it's bad, it's not like I can just say, okay, I'll take, I'd have to take down the listing so somebody else didn't, it was a, it's a whole thing and I don't know why that happens. Um, but yeah, that just adds, it makes it now, he's a part of this. Now the last thing that, my last tip for you, when you're signing your name, I wanna figure out where I want this. Do I want it right here? Do I want it here? So what I usually will do is take a pencil and I just hold it in the two locations to see where I think it would look best. I think if I sign my name, what's gonna happen is the viewer is gonna go like this, down to the signature, and right off the canvas. So I'm just gonna sign it over here. So I'm going to take a white charcoal pencil and write out my name. And the bonus of doing this is one, if I do this and decide that I don't like where it's located, I can erase it and do it again, it'll erase, no problem. The other thing is, sometimes people have a hard time with the paintbrush making their signature look like their name. So here, I wrote it with a pencil, it's very easy to do. We've got sirens, we'll wait for that to pass. There it goes. Okay, so I'm gonna take my liner brush and I'm just gonna do this with white. I don't want the signature, actually I'll do it with a little bit of the blue too. I don't want the signature to be super bold, super dark. I wouldn't sign it with black. Like I want the signature to be there, but I don't want it to be like, pay attention to me. It shouldn't be your main focus. I've seen people where they'll take like red and always sign their signature with red and it's like, that's an interesting choice. So let's go ahead and sign it. And now as I sign this, a little bit more water here. Gotta make sure to thin that paint out so it'll actually write. I do, I can lift the brush wherever I need to because you can't move it in one loop-de-loop. But I can do one line, lift it, do the next, lift it. And it looks exactly like my signature would when I'm handwriting it because I'm just tracing over what is already there. But I like, I'm liking this color because you can definitely see the signature without like, it's not drawing attention away from the shell, but it's still there. And then of course I do the year. That's optional. Not everyone does that. I was gonna stop signing the year on my paintings and then 2020, the whole everything happened. And it was like, well, that's, all, that's gonna be an interesting time in history. I'm leaving the, the signature uh, or the date on those. This, you can't hardly see, I'm gonna add a little bit of white. 
I'll go over it when it's dry. You get the idea. And then whenever I do anything ocean related, which this seashell is, I'm gonna do a little teeny dolphin tail at the end of the H. So that is it. That is my tip for signing. There we go. Okay, we are at 10 o'clock. We are done. Auction should be over now. It should say it's over, but it didn't because apparently my stuff isn't set up right. Anyway, actually, let me double check that because if I need to end that really quick because I put the wrong time, which is sometimes possible. Why do I keep trying to do lisa.com? That sounds like a scary place to go. Lawcree.com. You know your website. Use it. Um, did that end? Yes, it did end. $65. You got such a good deal because this painting is awesome and $65. Like, good job. Good, goodbye there. And thank you for, for bidding. Um, yay. Anyway, thank you guys for joining. Make sure to check out our moderators channels. They are all linked in the video description. They help so much. They help keep spam out of the chat. They actually, Nick writes down all of your questions throughout the, th the entire live stream that I'm painting and then sends it all to me at the end. Like they do so much. So definitely check out their channels and thank you guys so much for watching. Next week we'll be painting a frog. I will be at Aquashella on Saturday at noon on stage painting or drawing something. I don't know what I'm doing there yet either. Um, is that it? I don't know. I always forget important things. I think that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Hey, you. Yes, you. I see all your unused art supplies over there. Oh my God, those brushes aren't even opened yet. Tragic. You keep buying new fancy materials, but you don't use them because you don't want to waste them. Stop making your art supplies sad. Sign up for art lessons for as little as $4 a month. There are over 300 painting and drawing lessons available when you sign up and new ones every week. Patreon.com slash Lockery.